Hey guys, Spino Dude here, and welcome back to another collaboration with the Expeditioners Discovery Guild. I am so excited to be able to do this once again with Edge, and I want to send a big thank you to them for asking me to narrate their latest episode of Paleo Rift on Therizna Source Shalani Formis. Now, I'm just doing this little intro, guys, because I want to credit them completely. For this video. Now, all I did was provide the narration and uh, make the thumbnail for my YouTube channel here. They wrote the script, they edited the video, they did all of the hard work here. So, if you guys could do me a big favor, go check out their channel. Link is down below in the description. They do awesome work over there. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and let me know if you want to see more of this from time to time. The last one we did was last year on Acrocanthosaurus Adokensis. So, let me know if you want to see more of them on the channel. So, that's all for now, guys. I'll see you soon with another video. Enjoy this episode of Paleo Rift. Slash, hack, sever, slice, cutting through the dense vegetation of late Cretaceous Mongolia lived an array of interesting prehistoric creatures, one of which was the largest of its kind so far known, so large in fact it could keep away monsters like Tarbosaurus. This animal sported claws on its hands that would have given even the biggest ground sloth an inferiority complex. A set of massive swords used for any number of things. With a long neck and hot belly, Therizinosaurus shalaniformis, the turtle formed scythe reptile, truly was a one of a kind, the most extraordinary of extraordinary beasts. There lived a group of dinosaurs, theropods to be exact, that evolved in a completely atypical manner for their group. Instead of eating meat, like most of the theropod kind, gah, those posers, the therizinosaurs evolved to consume foliage and possibly some small animals. Akin to the ancient sauropodomorph ancestors, informally referred to as prosauropods. This group is known for many characteristics, but the most notable of them is the presence of large claws on the end of the digits, which were in turn attached to rather long arms. The group as we know of them today were realized in a rather different light in the past. Therizinosaurus was the very first Therizinosaur found, but ironically, it was not seen as it is today when its remains were pulled from the ground 69 years ago. Therizinosaurus shelaniformis was discovered in 1948 by a Soviet Mongolian expedition to the desert wastes of Mongolia. This particular venture took a peek through the geologic pages of the Nement Formation, a formation rich in late Cretaceous flora and fauna. After being hauled away from the sands and scorpions, the giant claws, only the first specimens to be found, were named and identified by Russian paleontologist Evgeny Maliev. Maliev incorrectly determined the claws to be testudine in nature, assigning them to the ends of the broad feet of a giant turtle-like animal. That, perhaps, as he reasoned, used such large claws to harvest seaweed. The one meter long claws were obviously not from a turtle, as we know now, 
but these fragmentary fossils were incredibly enigmatic and still remain so to this day. Later, in 1970, paleontologist Anatoly Konstantinovich Razdestvensky analyzed the claws and found that they showed characteristics that better belonged to a theropod dinosaur. And so the image of this animal was forever changed. No longer was it some form of strange gargantuan soft-shell turtle, but it was a dinosaur. A dinosaur with the largest claws ever known. Knowing so little about this animal, but with such intriguing fossil material, reconstructions of what it could have looked like were bound to be produced. It was at this period that Therizinosaurus was reconstructed with the head, body, and proportions of what was called a Carnosaur. You see, Carnosauria was the generic name given to most large-bodied carnivorous theropod dinosaurs at this point in history. However, since then, it has been found that there are many more divisions in the Theropoda group than just a generic, large-bodied hypercarnivore wastebasket. Therefore, Therizinosaurus was thought to have a square head filled with razor-sharp teeth, long Tyrannosaur-like legs, and of course the iconic long arms and claws. What a nasty predator that would have been. Serendipitously, similar mistakes were made with the other herbivorous theropod, Dinochirus, in that both were known only from very fragmentary arm and claw material, and both reconstructed as savage theropods with monstrous forearms. The march of science must go on. Paleontologist Rinchen Barsbold described new material in 1976, which consisted of more sets of claws, but also some forelimb material. Then, more material was described in 1982 by Altangerel Perlet. It was this find that gave us an idea of what the hind limbs looked like. Other than a little shoulder girdle material here, and rib material there, no more elucidating fossil specimens have since been found. All is not lost on how this animal may have appeared though, since, as we get back to what we noted about the fact that Therizinosauridae not being Therizinosauridae when Therizinosaurus was found, no other relatives to this animal were found until a new find, designated Segnosaurus galbanensis, showed the world that theropods could be very strange in their adaptations. But, yet again, they were incorrectly reconstructed. This time as semi-aquatic piscivores, dipping into the water to catch slippery fish with their long claws. It was given its own family, the Segnosauridae. A new discovery, that of Erlichosaurus andrusi, continued to enlighten the idea of these animals even further. Another Therizinosaur was discovered around this time, then regarded as its own type of animal, named Enigmasaurus mongoliensis, but was too fragmentary to be placed in close evolutionary proximity to Therizinosaurus just yet. For a while, through much of the late 1980s and early 90s, these animals were considered sauropodomorphs of some kind, possibly of the ancestral variety, what were once called prosauropods. It was not until 1993 and the discovery of Alchasaurus elcitiensis, and even the 1999 description of Bapiosaurus inexpectus, that the full image of what a Therizinosaur was, was becoming whole. It was clear that those referred to the Segnosauridae and Enigmasauridae, and of course the Therizinosauridae, were all one enigmatic, unique group of Meneraptorian theropod dinosaurs. It is with these latest discoveries that we can be more confident in the image of Therizinosaurus itself.
It can be inferred by closely related and well-preserved taxa, like Bepiaosaurus, and pretty much every other lineage of Manoraptorian theropods. That Therizinosaurus, and nearly all other Therizinosaurs, sported feathers of varying degrees. Most Manoraptorian theropods had pinacious feathers on their arms and less developed feathers on the rest of the body, and Therizinosaurus was likely no different. The preserved feathers of Bepiaosaurus, one of the basal most members of Therizinosauridae, showed it was covered in primitive feathers without advanced shaping or shafts much like the feathers of the young of modern avians, and the feathers of the living emu. So, we conclude that Therizinosaurus likely had a mixture of panaceous, primitive, and in-between feather types, to be used as insulation from the heat and the cold, and as display to other members of its species. The fossil material suggests an adult animal of around 10 meters and 5 tons, making it a rather large animal, able to keep away the largest of predators in its Mongolian home, like Tarbosaurus and Alioramus. It is unknown what Therizinosaurus used its claws for, and since the claws of Therizinosaurus are quite unlike that of most other Therizinosaurus, in that they were only slightly curved and flattened from the sides, it is possible Therizinosaurus was using its claws for something different than its relatives. It has been hypothesized the animal may have used its claws to break into termite mounds, but they wouldn't seem like the tools for such a job. Just look at anteaters and pangolins. Another hypothesis, a more likely one at that, suggests it used its long claws to bring food closer to its head like salad tongs. It may have used them for display to others, or even to ward off predators. I mean, who wouldn't back away from something with really long arms and really long claws? Sheesh. As little as we know of Therizinosaurus, more information on fossil animals is being revealed every day. And we have full confidence that someday, someone, somewhere, will finally unveil the mystery of Mongolia. The Mystery of Therizinosaurus, the Scythe Lizard. <laughs>